congrats, gentlemen. Coach, whenever you're settled, if you just want to give us an opening statement on tonight's victory, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, obviously, you know, thrilled with the performance. Uh, and it's, you know, just playing against Brian's, Brian's teams, uh, you know, just it's, uh, it's, it's always an honor to play San Diego State. Um, they've been one of the best college basketball programs um, you know, in the country for the last, you know, several years. The job he's done there, it's incredible. Uh, couldn't have more respect for their players. You know, how they show up. Um, obviously, you know, we had our best night, and uh, and they had, didn't have one of their best nights. And uh, obviously, didn't expect a game like this versus those guys. But you know, ultimate respect to San Diego State, true uh, true champions. Thank you, Coach. Let's take a question here in the front, right here. Zach Brazil, New York Post. Dan, that's now nine. You've won nine straight tournament games um, by an average of 22.8 points. Can he ask me or he's got to ask that? Sorry, what was the question? Can I ask that, Coach? Yes, yes, you can. Yeah. Oh, you can ask me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so that's nine straight tournament wins by an average of 22.8 what, 22 points. What, when you hear that number, just what is – is it hard to believe? or I mean, no, I mean it's not supposed to be this easy. I mean, we suck at winning close games. So, you know. <laughs> You got to go with the alternative. <laughs> um, no, I think the, the the group we got a killer instinct. Um, you know, we we play every possession with, with great desperation. Um, we got NBA level players that are incredibly well prepared. Uh, you know, by Luke Murray and Kamani Young, uh, who two of the best coaches in the country, assistant head coach, just two of the best that do it. Uh, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, we're, we're very comfortable in tournament play. We're hard to prepare for. Hi, Tara Sullivan from the Boston Globe. Um, Cam, I, I guess I wanted to ask this of you, having joined this team this year. Could you, how would you describe the hunger level for this team, and how much does it mean to you to see teammates who have already won kind of play with as much hunger as it seems you guys do this year? Yeah, I think uh, everybody's very hungry. You know, obviously the team had great success last year, but, you know, it's a different group. And, you know, a lot of those returners came back wanting to, you know, go do it again and, and help the new guys experience, you know, a national championship. So, uh, you know, I think that's just a part of the UConn culture. And, you know, I'm happy to, to be at UConn and happy to be a part of it. Right here in the back right. Uh, Dan, Mike Abelson, New Hampshire Union leader. Um, Alex drops eight right off the rip in the first about, I don't know, four minutes. Um, how much do you think that settled the team in? How much did that settle you in uh, as a coach, knowing this was a real wild card game? Yeah, I mean, we, we expected to have a very difficult time offensively versus these guys. They're top 10 defense and, you know, the, the, the physicality, um, you know, just that start by Alex you know, really settled this. Um, obviously, Cam's first half. Um, you know, Tinu's second half, you know, Donovan got it going. I mean, just, you know, the balance basically to have the four guys in double figures, two more guys with eight. Um, you know, we have a lot of answers. Right here in front. Uh, Dom Amori, Hartford Current. Steph, can you uh, discuss what you saw, what you thought going into the second half, and if you feel like this, this game maybe represented even a breakthrough to a, a different level for you? Um. I mean, I just saw that, you know, I, I kind of missed out on a couple opportunities to kind of, you know, grab some offense rebounds, kind of make some more plays for my teammates. And uh, second half, I just tried to, you know, uh, try to make up for those and, you know, just try to do whatever I can to, you know, uh, win my matchup and, and help my teammates. Right here in the middle. Hi, Connor Sargent, Daily Campus. Um, Dan, I was wondering if you could speak upon how the um, defensive um, – how the defense really stepped up in the second half. Um, specifically, when you look at how Ladie performed in the first versus the second, I mean, there's a real starch difference there, and it really seemed to shut down the SDSU offensive attack. I mean, in, in, the, in the first half, I think, you know, we made some, uh, you, know, uh, you know, he made three perimeter shots against Donovan uh, out in space, and then, uh, you know, two kind of pro broken play buckets, but obviously he had, he had 15 at the half, and then... Uh, just obviously to hold him, you know, a, a, an All-American caliber player like uh, like Jaden to uh, to three points in the second half. I think we just, you know, Donovan made it hard on him. Samson made it hard on him. Guys were, were helping off the right people on the perimeter. Just showed him a lot more bodies and played much better one-on-one -on -one defense. But um, you know, we're we're a top ten defensive team as well. So uh, 
um, again, that's the best way to keep yourself from being vulnerable in this tournament by guarding at a high level. Right here in the front left. Dan, uh, Joe Ruta, Hartford Current. Uh, you, you went to Donovan a little bit, you know, in the first half. He's putting up a bunch of shots, not really hitting. Um, but, but those three guys combined for 51. Um, so how were you able to – what was your focus in this game in terms of backcourt versus frontcourt and scoring? Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, – you know, Donovan had some, some good opportunities with, you know, with, you know, with Ladee. The opportunity to get three fouls on him there was – it was too tempting not to give him a couple of opportunities there. Uh, but that guy, you know, sometimes it's hard for a 7 3 guy to, to score against a freak athlete who's super strong, who could kind of leverage them a little bit. Uh, had that low leverage. But, um, you know, you, you look at the three guards um, and the performances by these guys, you know, the, um, you know, 17 and 4, 18 and 3, 16 and 11. Um, and then Haas, you know, I thought, I thought Haas was uh, Haas was really, really good too. Right here to the right, uh, Nick Galley, Field Level Media. This is for any of you guys. It's supposed to be a neutral site game, but a lot of UConn white in that crowd tonight. What does it mean to kind of have that fan support in a game like this? Go ahead, Stefan. Uh, I mean, it means a lot, you know, just to be able to travel with our fans. I mean, we travel very well. I feel like it gives us, you know, a kind of a boost, a little bit of an advantage, and. Uh, I mean, I, I heard Coach say it before. I mean, we, we tried to make it like stores north a little bit. So, uh, I mean, they showed out for us, and you know, it, it was definitely electric in there tonight. The committee didn't give that to us too. We had to we had to win a shit ton of games to get that. <laughs> right here to the left, um, <clears throat> Matt Votor, Mass Live. Dan, building off that a little bit, when you looked for a second, when you're putting your walk-ons in, it looked like you you looked up into that crowd for a second. Do you allow yourself to take a moment? You, you've, at that point, you've got the game in hand and realize that you, this is kind of special to have this around you, the, what you've just accomplished on the court in front of you and have the, the people and the support behind you. Is that a moment that you can kind of pause and, and keep for later? Yeah, I mean, the, listen, uh, the, the way that, that defending champs have fared in recent history, um, yeah, well, the, you know, it's, it's kind of been a... Uh, uh, against the odds in terms of the season we're having, following up the national championship with an even better season, you know, winning the Big East regular season uh, by multiple games and setting a program record for now for wins on the season and you win in the Big East tournament and, and now getting to an Elite Eight. You know, th this team has defied, you know, what, what past champions have done and, and taken this program to a completely different level. So, yeah, I think with about 13 seconds left, I allowed myself to enjoy it as I screamed to get the ball to Andrew's hand so he could dribble out the clock. That's been kind of a, 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 a super, uh, another superstition, get him the ball, please. And then just to be able to go over and hug my wife, uh, Andrea, who, uh, you know, she, uh, she's got to put up with me and she's got to deal with my socks and underwear and everything after this. Time for about two or three more here. Over here to the right. Uh, Adesina Koike, a lot of sports talk. Uh, coach, congratulations. Uh, to lose Jordan and Andre, but have players like Cam and Stefan step in to help fill those roles. How impressive was the most impressive part of two newcomers, even though they're in different stages of their careers, uh, in filling that uh, gap? And uh, speak to the chemistry as well of those two. There were a couple of tic-tac-toe passes between them that yeah, led to yeah. dunks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, those good. Jordan, Andre, Adama. You know, Joey, Naheem, all those guys are a big reason why we are where we are right now with this season, too, what they were built in terms of the championship culture. And, um, you know, this is just where our program's at right now. This is where our program's going to be. I don't think we feel tremendous pressure going into these round of 32 or Sweet 16 games. Obviously, we feel pressure because we want Cam and Steph and some of these guys that are maybe on their – you know, their last run at UConn to experience a Final Four and a national championship. But as a program, we don't feel a lot of pressure. I know as a staff, we don't because you know, we feel like the position that we're in right now is, is going to be our level and that we're going to be able to maintain it uh, b because we've got the formula. Right here in front. Um, Dan, on, on Steph, you know, you, you guys have talked about how unselfish he is as a freshman and, you know, for a, as a big five-star recruit. What do you just see of the progress he's making? Obviously, first career double double tonight, and you know his defense, and now his rebounding. Just as you as he's gotten, you know, more experience. What do you think of just the strides? Yeah, I mean, he's a pleaser, and he's he's a humble kid, and he's got 
he's got the great parents. And, uh, and then I think what makes it easier for Steph is, he's again, he's insulated with a, a great group of older players uh, and a great mix on the roster. You know, his relationship with Tristan, um, you know, has helped him a great deal. You know, Donovan, Alex Caraban, Cam Spencer, he's got, like, veteran players that aren't threatened by, you know, him in these mock drafts and, you know, all of his abilities and talent. You know, we don't have that petty shit in our program, you know. Like, we uh, just got a great group of people that support each other. These pe the, the players have a, a really special bond, and uh, I'll credit – you know, Steph's parents and, and, and these guys he gets to play with. we only got about two minutes left. We're going to take two questions. Go ahead, Tara. Um, Dan, maybe a little bit more about that, but what I was asking Cam, like that hunger, what do you see in some of the guys who have won? How do you see it manifest that they really are pulling for guys who haven't experienced it to feel it too? How, how do you know that? How do you see that? Yeah, you know, they're just uh, – we, we just got people that are uh, – that, that, that just are, are desperate to, to win more. We have winners. We have, uh, you know, we've, we've got we guys. We've got, you know, we, we've also, too, talked about legacy. I mean, you, you're talking Tristan Newton right now is, is uh, you know, is, it, it make a case for, you know, the, the greatest career that any guard's ever had while wearing the uniform at UConn right now, like while he's at UConn, like what he's accomplished in two years. You know, Donovan Klingon, you know, like, these guys right now are, are leaving a legacy in a place uh, that's hard to leave a legacy. We're making – it's been a historical season and a tough place to make history. So uh, – but that they're, they're galvanized by that. Um, special. Take one last one here. We'll wrap up. Tristan, what level of confidence does that give you going into Saturday to be sitting right next to your coach and hear him saying that about you right now? Yeah, I mean, it gives me a lot of confidence. You know, this isn't this isn't anything I haven't heard before from him. You know, he he praises me um, <laughs> behind closed doors, and you know, my teammates they you know they they give me great confidence. So you know, I got the the utmost confidence, and uh, can't wait for Saturday. Thanks, gentlemen. Good luck on Saturday. Yep, we'll be joined by head coach.